Hey y'all, coming back to you. Want to check in with you guys? I'm running behind a little bit, but everybody knows how it is. You gotta gotta do what's what's going on first before you can move on to the next. I'm gonna wait and give everybody a few minutes to jump on board. Once I get to about 15 people, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna finish off this tumbler. What we're gonna do? Make it look beautiful. Um, I hope everybody's doing okay. It's a little late in the evening. I know some of us work better in the evenings because it's a little quieter where, where we all are. When y'all come on board, y'all send me a message and let me know you're on. I like to make sure my comments are working in case you have any questions, okay? So somebody just shoot me a little message. I've got 17 people, so I'm going to go ahead and start talking about what we're going to do and what we've already done today, and then we're going to get going, okay? So I don't have y'all on here forever tonight. Somebody say, hey, there she is. Hey, Christina. Hey, hey, hey. Whoop, whoop. All right, listen, guys, if you were on here earlier, hey, Joni, hey, Heather, welcome, everybody, Candace, bring them on, bring them on, Bobby, all right, Jalissa, Gina, awesome, we're getting some people on board now, hey, Abby, all right, so listen, we did this tumbler earlier today, all this is is a 20-ounce skinny from Stainless Steel Depot, okay, um, I used some fabulous glitter that came in today. Um, from our friends at Geisha Glimmer. This is called Gary Grouch. It's a chunky mix silver. It's beautiful. I'm going to turn the light so you can see it a little better and let you get a good peek at it. I'm going to turn it just a little bit so you can see without getting a glare. And I want y'all to see how pretty this is without looking at me. It's going to be a huge glare, but y'all, this is beautiful. It really is beautiful. The glare is horrible, but I am going to take some pictures of this and put it up there. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Rachel. Is it Rochelle? Jennifer? Stephanie? Y'all all welcome. Ashley, I'm so glad y'all are joining me, okay? Geraldine, Dawn and Lily. Awesome. Um, yeah, I am bummed. I need a new turner. Any suggestions? My cup fell off the turner. It is a spinet and is not working so great. Um, my husband built my turners just so... I think most people know that, but I have a couple that I have bought. Um, the ones that he built me have a reversible turner. So if things kind of go south and they get too hot, I can reverse the spin on it. These things are amazing. They're super quiet, and they have lasted forever. I can put a link in there on where I got the motors from, and then the other's just basically the wood that you would need. Hey, Summer, Beth, Tammy, I'm glad y'all are joining me, okay? So this is the tumbler I did in part one. I did this today. Hey, Trevor! Awesome. I am so glad y'all are here. Y'all are some of my favorite people. You guys are amazing. Um, so I did this earlier today, and then I went back after I did the glitter, and I added my second coat of epoxy. So I have a smooth surface to work on. But I told you when we come back on that um, I wanted to kind of check. The name of that glitter, Brianna, is called Gary Grouch by Geisha Glimmer. And I'm going to put it at the top of the tutorial tonight. And I'm going to let y'all know where I got it from and add her link, okay? Now, listen, this thing is as smooth as a baby's butt. So, even though it's chunky mix, I'm not going to have to do any wet sanding except two spots. And I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but I got one piece of glitter sticking straight up. Because, remember, we patted it down. And I told you every once in a while, you'll get one piece. But I've got one little, little prickly spot here. And I've got one piece of chunky standing somewhere straight up. Let me find it. I'll find it in a second. Here she comes. This one right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's sticking straight up in the sky. So I'm going to show you how I sand. Now remember, some people wear masks, some people don't. Okay, Cody, Penny, Brittany, y'all welcome. I'm glad y'all are coming, okay? Um, Heather, I have heard that numerous of times. Is it from Amazon? Yes, ma'am. My, my Turner motor came from Amazon, okay? Hey, Bobby Lee, Sarah, okay? Listen, they come, there's different types of sanding paper. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of explain it to you because it kind of works if you're the same if you're ever in the medical field. It's like the higher the gauge, the softer the sandpaper. So this is a 220, 320 block, okay? The 220 side is almost for like a buffing. There's hardly any sandpaper to it. It's super, super smooth, okay? The 220 is a little bit rougher. You might be able to sand a fingernail down on it, but not, not very much, okay? Then I have a 120, which is super, super, super rough, 
great for sanding chunky. And actually, the 180 is good. You can see where I've used these, okay? Now, preference on wet sanding versus dry sanding. Wet sanding typically doesn't leave as many scratch marks in your epoxy, okay? Yay, Victoria, I'm welcome. I'm glad you caught me. Deb, thank you, thank you. Melissa. All right, so somebody saying, forgive me. Just tuning in. What glitter? It's Gary Grouch by Geisha Glimmer, and I'm going to post it at the top, okay? Hey, Rachel. Um, I sometimes dry sand. It depends, okay? This one piece that's sticking straight up, I'm probably going to wet sand because I don't want to scratch this up too much. Sometimes you can get kind of deep little scratches in your cup, and it will cover with epoxy, but every once in a while, it might get a little bit too deep, and you'll be able to see that. We see it. Sometimes a customer doesn't see it, but if you see it, then somebody else is going to see it. So just keep in mind, wet sanding doesn't make as many deep scratches, okay? Dry sanding is great, too. I've done some dry sanding, especially on the rim. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to the rim in a minute, if anybody's been having problems with that, okay? Hey, Jessica, you tell your four-year-old that I'm here. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay? Um... If you dry sand, also, some people say to wear a mask or a respirator. Epoxy resin has a powder that's similar to, like, getting your nails done. It can be toxic. Um, there are times that I don't use a mask or a respirator, and for this one little piece, I'm not going to. I just got one piece of glitter sticking straight up, and I don't want it to cut through my tattoo, okay? So, I'm going to use probably a 180 because it's standing straight up. It's a little rougher. I could about sand my nails with it, okay? Just so you'll know. I got a cup of water here. I'm going to actually find my spot. I'm going to wet it a little bit. I do have some sandpaper here also. This actually I stole from my husband. He's in the living room, so I'm looking over my shoulder to make sure he ain't getting ready to throw something at me. But this goes on a uh, electric like sanding block. It's got a sticky back. And I really like it because you can put your hands on it and it won't go anywhere. And you can use it to sand too, okay? I actually may use this instead of the block. I want to find my little spot. And I'm actually going to hold it. I can stop my turner. And I'm just going to sand that one spot, okay? I'm going to pull it off here, make it a little bit easier for me. So you don't have to watch it spin. I'm going to show you something else in a second before we get to doing that tattoo. So I'm just going over that one little spot that's sticking straight up. I don't want it to be sharp. I want it to be smooth so it doesn't do anything funky to my tattoo. Okay? A little bit more water. The water just keeps the powder down and also keeps the scratches a little bit more to the surface. Okay, guys? All right, now I'm going to show you what it does to the cup. For those of you who haven't wet sanded yet, I'm going to dry it off a little bit. I'm going to let you see. You can tell the difference. This is good. This is where I sanded. It's a little duller. It's not as shiny. And, of course, over here is good. So, from here to here is where I sanded in this spot. Now, when I add more epoxy over top of this, now that I have it smooth, it's going to actually cover that dull spot. It'll go back to being pretty, okay? So, I don't want you to think you've messed your cup up. I'm just kind of feeling around. This cup really did good on my second coverage. I've got one more little spot. It's not that big, but I do want to hit it one time. It's, that got it. But like I said, I did a flood coat over top of my glitters, okay? Some people say, well, what's a flood coat? To me, a flood coat, don't know if I'm right or not. Somebody will have to help me, okay? Um, hey, Delight. Hey, Tammy. To me, a flood coat is when you use a whole lot more epoxy than you normally would, and you're doing it to either cover your vinyl or your glitter, okay? I did a flood coat on this because it's a chunky mix, and sometimes chunkies are super, super hard to cover, okay? But if you remember in the last tutorial, I patted everything down real nicely. I took those extra few minutes to do that. I do have a few very minor rough edges here. I'm not going to sand that. I want you all to pay special attention when you're doing your cups, okay? I know I say love on the bottoms, but let me say something because somebody sent me a message about this, and I think it was very valid, and it was a good question. Have you ever looked at the bottom of your cup, and you have great coverage on the very bottom, great coverage on the sides, but you'll look right along this line, and you'll have, like, coverage, a bald spot, and then coverage, and a bald spot. That actually just means, I mean, it's hard to cover this in one coat, this one little lip, okay? If I took this sandpaper... 
and I start sanding those rough edges down too hard or I'm too aggressive, I will take the shine out of that glitter because there's no epoxy covering it. I hope that makes sense, okay? So be real careful. Hey, Jennifer, be real careful when you start sanding this. I honestly would use one of my lighter sandpapers just because I want to bump it, but I don't want to hurt it. I hope that makes sense. I just don't want to hurt that glitter, but I do need to soften it up a little bit so it doesn't stick through my next layer. But you're doing it so lightly that it's not going to take the shine out of that glitter. So that's about it. It doesn't take the shine out of the glitter where I've sanded it. Okay, I got one little spot right here I don't like. I may work on that in a minute. Keep that in mind. If you have no epoxy here, be real careful sanding, okay? Hey, Susan. I'm glad I make you smile. Y'all make me smile. Hey, Misty. All right, so here's one more thing I'm going to show you, and we're going to apply this tattoo, okay, guys? We're going to get you going. So, y'all know I use Fast Set, and Fast Set is an amazing product. It's a counterculture product. It sets in my house in about an hour. Um, my house is like an igloo, but that's the way I like it because <laughs> I'm hot natured, okay? Um, Misty, you are very welcome. Anytime y'all need any help, y'all just send me a message. I was glad to help you. I had, I had nobody to help me when I got started, so I wanted to help y'all. So, because I added so much epoxy, did that flood coat I talked to you about, my noodles kind of stuck to my cup. You see me picking this stuff off. And I already did it without showing you. But if you have that problem, if you'll take your pool noodle and push it down very gently to separate it from the top of the cup, you have to push it down. If you pull it back, you're liable to break it off, okay? Push it down gently by supporting the other side. Work your way around the cup, okay? I've still got some pieces that are a little stuck. But you see, I'm supporting the other side. I don't want to push it off the back, okay? So I'm going to keep working my way around until I've kind of broken that seal. Okay, once you have, this is where it all used to be. Okay, this was all that epoxy that was stuck to my top of my cup. Can y'all see it? Now, I didn't lose any glitter right here. That was glitter that was put up on top of the cup when I was doing the, the shake. So, see, all this was attached to my cup. And all I did was push real gently to separate it. Now, watch. We're going to pull this out of the cup. Now, y'all don't judge because you see I use this to spray paint, too. <laughs> you just have to be careful with that stuff because it can get all over you, and then you'll have white paint everywhere. Now, somebody said to me one time, how do you clean the rim? Now, I've already done a tutorial on it, but I want to show y'all something, and the reason I do this, especially for this cup, okay? Hey, LaDonna. How are you? All right. Hey, Nicole. So, listen. I've got this cup with chunky glitter. You can see spots. That way, that's a great look. Can y'all see that? All sticking up on top, okay? Now, listen. I want you to think about something. I didn't know this in the beginning, and I would wait till the very final coat to let dry. Hey, Jasmine. And then I would take, this is the way I did it before. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? I would take my little X-Acto knife because I didn't know any better and didn't know what I was doing. Final coat, I'm done. It's dry. I'm ready to deliver it to the customer. And I would do this when I'm ready to deliver. I go around the cup real gently, pulling all the, you'll probably see it pop all over me. See the pieces pop? But you have to do this gently, guys. But I was doing this on the final coat. So I had to think about it. I made a couple cups for myself. When I did this on the final coat, and then I'd wash it to give to the customer, because I've interrupted the seal by cutting it, okay, it would leak water behind the epoxy. So think about how long that would last. So now what I do is I don't wait till it's at the end and it's dry. I clean it on my flood coat so that when I do my final coat, I'm going back over the top and sealing that rim, but it's already clean for me. Are you going to get a few spots of epoxy on the inside? Yes. You take your little X-Acto knife and it pops right out. The paint that's inside your cup, if you happen, because I don't tape the inside, if you get the tape or the paint on the inside like this one, it looks, that's a hot mess. Acetone works perfect, okay? Just some acetone on a paper towel, okay? Let's see what we got there. Susan Armstrong, I'm so glad you're here. So I'm just going to go around this cup. I'm not applying epoxy right now, but I just want you to see, if you do this gently and angle your blade very so slightly, and be careful, these blades are super sharp. Don't get too aggressive and too fast with this, 
because you can actually pull the glitter off the cup and then you're gonna have a nice white spot I got one little tiny 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 piece of glitter right here now if I don't cut that just right, it's going to peel all the way off and leave me a big old bald spot. Can you see that? So be real careful when you're doing this, okay? I don't want you to ruin your cups. And somebody's probably going to say, she's taking a razor to it. It's cutting the cup all to pieces. I promise y'all, I've never had anybody come back to me and say that their cup was cut up and that they were not happy. They were really amazed at how clean it was. Um, after I do the rim, this is what else I'll do. I'm going to go around this one little spot. Now remember, I'm doing this on my second coat. So when I do my third coat, it's gonna seal it. It will not be exposed to any water or air, okay? So let's assume that I have done this whole cup all the way around, okay, and it's ready to go. I've, I'm not gonna sit here and work with it, but you can see from a while ago to now, other than the epoxy I have on the inside of the cup, that that looks a ton, a ton better, okay? I found 100% acetone at Walmart in the nail polish section. They actually carry acetone over where the linseed oil is also, um, and paint strippers, stuff like that. There's a big can of acetone. It's like 15 bucks, just so you know that too. I'm going to take one of my finer grit sandpapers, so I'm going to use like a 220. Now watch what I do. I'm not sanding. I'm kind of bumping it to buff it out. The reason being, where I've cut that, it's a little sharp, guys. Is it going to cover with the next coat of epoxy? Probably. But I like to give me a little smoother edge to work with, so it kind of seals over the top, okay? So I take and brush down, kind of rounds that edge right there, okay? I turn the cup all the way around, giving it just a little brush down. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this from where you are. So this is where I went from to about right here. Now look at this between my fingers versus this here. Can you see the bumps and the ridges? Now imagine that being in your mouth even after the second coat of epoxy, okay? That can be a little rough on somebody's mouth. They'll be able to feel that. But this up here is super smooth. So when my next coat of epoxy goes on to seal, it, it's amazing, okay? Alright, so that's that. I want to put this to the side. That was just a quick little thing I wanted to show you. Just make sure you seal it. Don't give it to a customer after your final coat, okay? I'm going to stick my dirty little pool noodle back in here. Okay. I'm going to wipe it off just because of those little white paint flakes. Now I have touched this cup and touched this cup and touched this cup, guys, with my hands and no gloves. Anybody ever talked about epoxy repel? Okay. You talk about your epoxy's kind of coming off of your cup or bubbling or fish eyeing. And I apologize. I had some ice cream. <laughs> Go figure, fat girl ate ice cream. Um, so I got a little heartburn. But if you have a cotton ball and some alcohol, everybody's always talking about alcohol. Oh, I bumped y'all. Y'all don't walk away. Y'all doing the disco on me. I always go back before I do anything, whether it's going to be this um, tattoo or I'm getting ready to do epoxy. doesn't take but a minute. I don't use a lot, just enough to wet the cotton ball. And I kind of just go over my cup. But, y'all, you have to have a smooth surface. Has anybody done this on a non-smooth surface? You got little pieces of cotton sticking everywhere. Okay? All right. So, I'm just going over this real gently. One, to get rid of any dust or residue that I have from sanding. And also to get rid of any residue that I had left on there from me touching it just now. Now, look. See that? All that would cause you a problem when you do your epoxy. Okay? All right. So, now, we got that done. I'm going to give it a second. I'm actually going to use the bottom of that back of that cotton ball, just kind of drying it a little bit, rush the process up because we're going to talk about the tattoo now, okay? Now I got the tattoo. Hmm. I'm going to figure out which one we we're going to use. I think somebody wanted to use the lion, but I wasn't completely convinced. Can y'all hold on just a second? I grabbed the wrong one. Bella. Can you grab that tattoo that's up there on the printer that looks like this and a pair of scissors? Sorry, guys. I grabbed the wrong one. So these are the temporary tattoos. Let me show you these. Bella's my little helper tonight. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Yep, that'll work. Great. All right. I bought about 12 of these from Amazon. There was about four of the sleeve tattoos. So they're meant to wear like this. So there's four big ones, and then I got about six little ones. That's upside down. Okay? 
So what I'm going to do, I'm not crazy about this whole tattoo. I think it's pretty, but I'm not crazy about this. Um, it, I am kind of crazy about that big one on top, though, just to be honest with you. What do y'all think? Yeah. Roses was so pretty. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm super crazy about this one. Okay? What's well, upside down, too? Let's do it this way. I'm kind of crazy about this one. But I'm not crazy about the top. I mean, it's a man holding a baby and a clock. It's pretty. But for for a cup like this, it would be more of a female cup. I kind of like that. So you don't have to use this whole one. You can cut to trim these, okay? Because you're going to put this on your cup. So let's say, we'll do this real simple. I'm going to do one of them. I'm going to leave it in the plastic just so y'all know what I'm doing. I kind of already looked to see where I was going to have to cut it. So we want the tattoo to go from top of the cup, maybe about that far off the top. You don't want it right on the lip or you'll have some overhang, okay? Let's see. Love that one. Which one? The clock. The clock. That's what I'm saying. I love the clock. And then I want it to go to the bottom to about a quarter an inch off the bottom. Because you don't want it to be all the way to the edge because you can get the tears and there'll be some issues with it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm measuring kind of top to bottom. And I already kind of did this earlier. It's wanting to pull a little bit. I'm going to cut at the top of the flower. And I'm going to cut at the bottom of the flower. And that's going to be real, real stinking close. Okay? And then I'm just going to leave. I can leave that excess all the way around. Or I can cut it off. You can do either or. Neither one's right. Neither one's wrong. Y'all, these are kind of... I'm going to put this very... It's kind of like doing a water slide, but it's not at all completely like doing a water slide. Okay? Um, when we do this, I'm going to my little towel here. Hold on a second. The tattoos go on. Do you, is anybody as old as me and used to get Cracker Jacks in the box? And you always got a temporary tattoo in the Cracker Jack. So you ran to the bathroom and you took the, took the tattoo and you flipped it upside down. And you put the water on it and waited a minute and took it off and you had a tattoo. I don't know. I might be too old for y'all. But that's pretty much what we're going to do with this. Same basis. Now, I have pulled it out of the plastic sleeve it came in. Okay? Now, I'm not going to take it off yet because I want to do my trimming. But on top of this tattoo, there's a film. Don't take it off till you're ready to use it. Okay? Because if you touch this, it's a little sticky. And if your hands are wet, you're, you're messed up. Okay? So, I know, Melissa, isn't that funny? I'm that old, too. <laughs> All right, so we're going to leave that plastic thing on, but you did take it out of the plastic it came in. Now, I don't want... I'm going to go ahead and trim this up. I told you I was going to be going to the bottom of the flower, and this line's not straight. It's not a big deal. But I'm going to kind of straighten it up a little bit while we're talking, okay? I did the Cracker Jack tattoos, too. I'm telling you, they were the bomb. All right, so I'm just straightening this up. I could have had this pre-cut, I know, but I didn't. So I'm just going around... I, for some reason, like to trim around mine. I just don't like to have that excess in case I decided to put another tattoo on the back side. I don't have so much overhang on these. You do not have to trim like I'm doing. You can put it down just like it is right now, okay? I'm going to show you what I've done. I'm not going to hide anything from you. I basically left about a quarter inch gap around um, the tattoo itself. I'm leaving every part on it, but I'm just cutting from flower to flower because I know the whole thing wouldn't fit on my cup by length, okay? So I'm going to show you what I've done. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? All I've done is kind of trimmed it up, okay? Everything you see there will be on the cup. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this turner so that we can do this slowly and y'all can pay attention. Y'all remember I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in the kitchen. All right, so we're going to cut that off. Now, we trimmed it up. We've got this sanded. We're ready to go. Find you a good spot that you want to go to. Okay, I'm going to put it right here. And as I put it on, I'll turn it to you guys so you can see. Okay, all right. I like to take a little bit of water. I have some here handy. And under my cup, I have a towel to kind of catch the mess. Wet your cup a little bit doesn't have to be a lot okay just wet you a section that you know is going to be wide enough for this tattoo and this is a, a skinny okay this is a 30 ounce skinny I said 20 I think earlier but that's a that sure does look like a 30 
That's a 30 ounce, I think. I don't think. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired, and I just had ice cream, and I think my sugar is about 762. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to pull this off. Now remember, if your hands are wet and you touch it, you're in a hot mess. So try and work with dry hands. I'm keeping my wet hand kind of pulling off the film. We're just going to slide it off. You're going to be going face down on your wet cup. You don't want it saturated, but you do want it damp. These are not going to slide, okay? When you put it down, that's where it's going to be. So do not try and move this tattoo. It's not like a water slide where you have a wet cup and you can move it around, okay? Now, I'm going to kind of look again to see exactly where I'm going. I want this to go from top to bottom. And I can already tell you it's going to be too long. Because this is the edges of my cup. Oh, you can't see this edge. And I apologize. But this is entirely, it's about a half inch too long. But remember I said I was going to cut flower to flower and I didn't. See what I'm saying? So try it out before you get ready, okay? Always just go back and measure and make sure it feels good to you. It looks like it's going to fit so you're not trying to cut this wet and it folds under the bottom of your cup. And then you got a hot mess, okay? So right before I get ready to apply, I always just kind of hold it over top. And see, that's going to work perfectly. It gives me about a quarter of an inch at the top and the bottom. Okay? I'm going to re-wet my cup. Thank you for making these instructions and your tutorials so clear and easy to understand. I appreciate it. You are very welcome. You are very welcome. That's for Miss Beverly. Okay? All right. So, I'm wet up. Here we go. Now, remember, try not to touch that with your wet hands the least that you can. Now, make sure I got it sitting straight because you know I'm bad about putting stuff on upside down. But here we go. All right, I'm going to kind of look because once I lay it down, I can't pick it back up and I cannot slide it. So really eyeball it. Lay one end down. I still have my hand on this and press in the middle and then come up. Okay? Because you don't want these two tacked down in a big bubble in the middle. So we're going to roll it over top of the cup. It will stay a little bit. See, right now it's staying. But it needs to be wet. Okay? Kind of like the old Cracker Jack tattoos. I'm going to wet this wet this paper really, really good. You want it to be entirely wet. And it takes the water very nicely. It's not water repellent or anything. So I'm basically just scooping a little bit on my fingers. Okay? And wetting this cup up real good where the paper is. Making sure that if I see any bubbles forming under the paper, that I kind of roll them out while this paper's on that. Once you take it off, you can rub some of the ink off of the tattoo. So I try to work all my bubbles out while I have it on the turner, okay? I got a huge bubble over here, I just felt it. So I'm working out as many bubbles as I can while I have the paper on, okay? You're gonna wind up with a few. I want y'all to see, you can see them. Do you see these right here? Okay, you're gonna wind up with a few and you will be able to press them out. So if you can't get them all worked out, don't get nervous. Okay, and don't get upset. Remember, the crafting is fun. You don't want to make this into a tedious job to where you, you're unhappy and you're, you're not pleased with your work. Y'all, I can't tell you how many cups I've made that I'm not pleased with. But somehow, a customer always loves them, you know? So it just gives you reassurance that if you use your creative mind and you do it happily and joyfully, somebody's going somebody's gonna to love your cup too, okay? Now listen, before you go in here and go snatchy, <laughs> and you try to pull this off, I always peek because I have pulled them off and there'll be nothing there. I'm going to peek before I lifted it. All right. So we good. <laughs> 300 people watching. I won't pull this off. <laughs> okay. And then I'll be there. So I'm going to wet my hands. So when I pick this up, I don't pick up the tattoo with it. I'm going to start at one edge. Kind of rolling it gently. Making sure that you're not pulling the tattoo as you take the paper off, okay? Roll it off. I will be taking it off the turner so you can see it a little better. But before I do, I want to kind of smooth it out very gently. Making sure I don't have any bubbles. I got a bubble here, but it's going to work out just fine. Because my cup was wet under the bottom. But remember, don't push too hard. Work it out softly. And it will not slide. Don't treat it like it's a water slide, okay? Or you're going to wind up real unhappy. It's going to bunch up on you. So, honestly, this looks pretty darn good. I'm going to spin it around a little more where you can't see. Make sure I got all the bubbles worked out because I sure do hate to waste a tattoo. They're not that expensive. 
but this cup really I love this glitter and I think this is going to turn out really nice. I'm getting ready to take it off to show you. Some people are going to tell you, pat it dry, okay? Some people are going to say, let it air dry. I'm going to just be honest with you. I leave mine sitting on this turner. I turn it face down so the water can drip off the cup and it's not pooling up underneath. And I'll come back to it in 30, 45 minutes, okay? And then I'll see if it's dry enough that I'm ready to add my epoxy or if I'm going to add a name to it, okay? All right, so we are going to pull this off gently. I say gently. Watch me knock everything off the kitchen table. <laughs> Scare the rabbit to death. Just so you can get a good look at it, okay? So you can see, of course, that the glitter shows through the clock. It shows through the flowers, okay? It still looks really good because we got the edges trimmed out nicely. Now listen, I could honestly go back and put something else on the back. I could put another tattoo so it's a complete wraparound. Or I could put a name on it. Okay? There you go. That is our temporary tattoo um, tumbler for today. Now, when this does dry, like I said, I leave it up there. I let it air dry. I'll come back. And if I'm going to do any vinyl work, I'll do it now before I apply my third coat of epoxy. That will be my last and final. I've already done my rim. It's ready to go. So, when I do it again, it's going to seal it. Okay? I hope y'all had a good time. I told you I'd keep you 20 minutes. I kept you longer. I love y'all for tuning in. I know it's late, um, but I did. I, I'm trying to do better, guys, about getting on here when I say I'm going to, but sometimes things are out of your control, okay? Thank you again. Let's see. If you make a glow-in-the-dark one, would you add the glow powder and the epoxy later, before, or after the tattoo? Me, personally, I would do the glow-in-the-dark under the tattoo. I think it would shine through, okay? I'll answer all the questions later. Thank y'all for joining in. I'm going to go back and answer everything, okay? Bye, guys.